We read here in Romans 10, chapter 14, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, this verse is saying that you won't believe unless you've heard the gospel. You can't hear the gospel unless somebody preaches it to you. Now, one way you could interpret this verse is it must be a physical person speaking to you in order to preach the gospel. And I think it makes sense probably at the time it was written because, you know, they don't have technology. They don't have a way that you can record somebody talking and then watch that recording. But is there anything different about somebody talking to you or if they were behind a television screen or behind a computer screen and talking to you? I mean, if there was no interaction, it would be exactly the same thing. It's like now, if there's no interaction, you know, is there a difference between you listening to this sermon online and listening to it now? Yes, your experience may be different, you know, because you're actually here, you may feel different. Are you in church when you're listening to it online? No, because you're not part of this body, but can you get the same information? Uh, yes. So somebody might say, oh, I didn't believe the right way because, you know, I just, you know, I just read a gospel tract or I just read an article on a website, or I just listened to this sermon or this video clip online, and it re I realized I was not believing the right thing, and then that's when I called upon the Lord Jesus Christ. But I didn't actually have some preacher come to me, open the Bible, explain it to me, pray with me, did I believe the right way? And they might question whether or not they believe based on that. Well, you know what, I don't think whether or not somebody actually preaches it to you physically makes a difference whether or not you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because, you know, you, you believe, it's like going back to that uh, example about being born. I mean, you don't may not know, you know, the point at which you believe, but you know that you believe now. It's not going to change whether or not you can believe or not, whether or not somebody actually was there uh, talking to you. So perhaps, you know, somebody called on the Lord, maybe after reading a tract, maybe watching a video, maybe listening to an audio clip, or even uh, reading something on a website. Now, do I believe tracks can lead somebody to salvation? Now, I, I believe it's possible. You know, I'm not going to rule out the fact that they can't because, you know, I guess people have in the past. You know, they've read it. Um, it's given them some information. You know, maybe they've heard about it before. You know, you could argue that, well, they, they've always heard it somewhere. But even so, is it possible? I'm not going to rule out the fact that it's impossible for a, a written piece of literature, even on a website or on a piece of paper, could give somebody the information that they need about the Word of God to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I think it can be possible just because I'm not willing to say it's impossible. Um, but you might say, yeah, but tracts don't talk. You know, the Bible says like, you know, how should they hear without a preacher? And something that's written doesn't speak to you. So how are you meant to hear it? Well, uh, look at this verse in 2 Peter. And we've gone here before when I talked about the Word of God, but look at what Peter writes here in 2 Peter 3. And as also in all his epistles, so these are letters, these are written documents, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Now, when I alluded to this verse, when I was talking about the Word of God, saying that the Word of God was spoken, but we don't really know if all of Paul's letters were, were preached. I mean, surely they were preached in his mind, right? Because you can't think something without saying it, and then he penned them down. But then when he sent that letter, you know, somebody could have just read that letter, and, this, and it's saying here that the epistles are speaking to them. So, is it possible that something written speaks to you? And you can hear it, and that, in a sense, is the preacher talking to you. Because when you read something, you speak to yourself, don't you? So you're hearing the words that are written down on that page. You know, just a thought there, but, you know, do I think it is impossible? I don't think it's impossible for somebody to be able to read something and, um, and get the information they need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I do think it's possible just because I don't think it's impossible. We can see here that written material can speak to somebody. Um, so you might ask the question then, well, well, if you believe that tracks can get people saved, 
well then why, why are we bothering to go talk to them? You know, like, well, if, if, why don't we just mail out tracks and put billboards up and don't talk to anybody? Well, the reason why we go out door knocking, and, we, and I mention this, is because, you know, I want to engage the people. You know, because uh, something that, like a written publication, doesn't provoke, may not provoke them to thought, may not ask them questions and, and force them to think and engage them, answer their questions. So I, I don't want to just leave it up to them getting the information. I don't want to leave that up to chance. I want to get to them and talk to them and bring it up to them so that they'll think about it. But you know, just because one method is more effective than another, you know, just because I think door knocking is more effective than maybe street witnessing or just handing out a gospel tract, I don't think that that then means that a gospel tract is worthless. You know, because just because something is less effective than another method doesn't mean the less effective method is worthless. I think it has its place. Because what if somebody doesn't talk? What if somebody is dumb, meaning like they don't have a voice or they're unable to speak? Or what if you're in another country and you're unable to speak that language? Would you not give somebody a gospel tract? Would you not give them some sort of media that they can watch in their own language? I mean, even here, I mean, we, it'd be great if we could translate our gospel tracts into Chinese and everything like that so that when you meet somebody in Chinese, you don't have to just leave them with an English tract. And maybe that's what I was thinking. Maybe that's what we can use all the different colors for. You know, so maybe for blue, we can have like a tract for Muslims and maybe different colors, we can have different language tracts. So then it's, you can quickly see easily uh, what tract you're holding in your hand. Just take a couple. You know, would you not give them that gospel tract? You know, I mean, even though some of us might think, you know, say, is, is this tract doing anything? I think it, you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't give it to them. I mean, if you didn't think, if you didn't think gospel tracts did anything, if they were worthless, then why would you even leave that piece of literature with them in hope that they might read it? Um, and it would be great if we didn't speak the language, if we give something to them in their language, I think it does serve a purpose. So I do think, I don't think they're worthless. I don't think they're as effective as somebody who speaks Chinese, for example, talking to somebody and reasoning with them and answering their questions and explaining things. No way is it, is it as effective. So that's why we are not just going to leave it at that. We're not just going to give out tracks and wipe our hands and say we've done our job because we could be doing so much more. You know, there's a saying, different strokes for different folks. I don't know if you guys have heard that. So, you know, just because you didn't have somebody explain to you the gospel, maybe you watched a video, maybe you read something and got saved, that doesn't mean you are not saved. It doesn't mean that you do not believe. It's not a good way to determine whether or not you have faith.